stream working on YouTube properly because it always crashes and it has not crashed. Yes, all right, we'll start streaming now. How are we all today? So, um, what is happening on my side? Uh, it is the last day of our school holidays. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with the Australian system, uh, we have uh, four school terms and we have about two weeks in between each term and then we have a five week break in summer, which is December to January. So it's quite different from the States uh, or depending on where you're from, it might be different. Uh, but it is the last day of the school holidays for me. Um, I've been busy. Um, I've been making a lot of videos, as you can probably see from my um, YouTube page. In fact, I thought I made a lot more than that. Um, I, I'm looking through my uh, list of videos now. Um, in fact, you can see for yourself. Uh, I thought I made a lot more. Like it seemed like a very busy month. I made how many? I make I made um, the uh, Mong Yenbo uh, review, the Overlord it's two. Um, I made uh, Far Cry Five pop shots. That's three. Longbow four. Um, the World Archery Video 5, um, ET2 6, Reflections, is that, yeah, 7, um, and then we have a practice video, it's 8, 9, I've lost, I lost track of what I'm doing, uh, yeah, so, yeah, um, that's around 10 videos, including the Tune Raider 3 one, and we count the, uh, Strain on Bird, it's about 11, actually, that's been quite a lot, yeah, uh, it's, it's been quite busy. Um, I don't know, it just felt like I've been slacking off. Maybe because I've been playing, I've, I've had more time to play around with. Um, that or, um, I've just been felt, you know, I've been wasting more time playing Fire Cry 5, which isn't a waste of time. It's an absolutely beautiful game. But, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not used to holidays. So, um, yeah, there we go. Uh, I've, I've been busy. Um, the highlight for this week is, of course, the, uh, the World Archery video. Um, that was, I don't know, I, I just like how they, they contacted me, like, one day, the next day I filmed it, and it's like, no big deal. Um, normally, being asked by World Archery to do something is a pretty big deal. It's, like, the highest form of recognition. Um, I'm like, yeah, whatever, I'll still do it. So, well, it wasn't a big deal to me. Uh, but it was a fun project, and hopefully, if you haven't seen it, do check out the Shoot Like Me video. Um, I, I had been planning a Don't Shoot Like Me video. Video, but you know, since they contacted me formally, I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll do a proper one before that. So, um, okay, how are we going? So, hello to everyone. Hello, Dexter from Mauritius. Hello to Unitato, Unitato, um, and Arnis, of course. What's the archery juice? I actually don't have any juice for me today. Um, I had an iced coffee before. Uh, I will be having an uh, espresso, espresso thick shake from Domino's Pizza later on. Um, that's my special end of a holiday um, feast, I guess. Um, zip keeping. You've got the Gippsland shoot from the Nationals coming up. Well, good luck with that. And let's see. So I've got a couple of videos from um, some uh, viewers today to look at. Um... But before that, I want to show one video, which for those who've been following my Facebook page, you've probably seen already. So let's watch this scrub shoot, okay? So let's get some high quality up here. Um, I mean, most of you watching this have probably already seen this, but just for the lols, let's watch this together. So we'll hop over to Facebook. Let's watch this noob shoot a bow. Here we go. <laughs> it's this video. That's right. So this is that classic, um, well, whoops, that wasn't meant to happen video. So uh, it's interesting because this is going, I was say viral, but it's being shared a lot. So I've got like 4.7 thousand views and Facebook is very good at sharing videos. Like uh, YouTube is great. I've got a much bigger YouTube reach. But Facebook is very fast for sharing things, especially short videos like this. So, um, it's, it's had a pretty wide look. Um, it's got about 20,000 people who haven't seen it, um, plus about 5,000 watching it. And it's been shared a lot. It's one of my most popular um, uh, posts on Facebook, apart from the memes I'm posting. Um, but that one was interesting because a lot of people have been saying things like, oh, the dry fire and so on. Uh, it's not a dry fire. So firstly, one, the bow isn't broken. Uh, it is a two-piece fiberglass bow. If you haven't seen the video, check out the ET4 Mong Yuan uh, bow review. Um, that is the beginner horse bow. So the bow is actually completely fine. This is a, a plus for the bow. If this was a uh, video using a wooden horse bow, that's gone. 
but it's a fiberglass bow and what happened was it basically came, came apart at the joint so all it did was put it back together and it shoots fine um so it it looked a lot worse than it actually was so a lot of people were saying about oh yeah it's um you know it's it's a dry fire the bow's gone rip and no, the bow's completely fine it's fiberglass so uh if you if we watch it together before i'll take the questions let's watch this one more time so this is a slow motion version and we'll, we'll address a few things so like i said firstly the um the string didn't snap the string was fully intact and it was shooting just fine um, secondly, the boat isn't broken. Um, what you see here, where I'm holding, uh, where the leather is, is where the two pieces join together. So, normally in a dry fire, you you would see the thing snap, and that tends to happen on wooden bows. This is a fiberglass bow. You can see that's not the break. That's the joining component. There's nothing actually holding these things together apart from the fact that you're pulling the bow back. So, it's a takedown bow. That's where it joins together. You can see there, that's why I'm not panicking. Like, if people say I'm so calm, it's not broken. Um, it's just that the top piece came off. So, just put it back on, it's fine. Why did it happen? Uh, people say dry fire. No, I don't think so. Uh, I shot the arrow, so I kind of know what happened here. Um, did the arrow come off the string? No. Uh, the these, these particular arrows are club arrows, which we bought for our 15-pound beginner bows. The knocks are small. They are very small. So it actually takes quite a bit of effort to put the arrow onto the string. If you watch the full review, um, you see me loading the arrow, the bow a few times. It's a very audible click, which I don't um, have the sound on right now. But before this shot, it was a very loud click. I did check the footage a couple of times. Um, so the arrow did click onto the string. You can't remove it unless you shoot it. Now, it's really hard to take off. And I'm using a thumb draw as well, so it's probably less likely to dislodge the string, uh, the, the, bow, the arrow from the string, especially if it's really tight. Um, you, you, the arrow can fall off if you shoot a very loose knock and you knock it off with your fingers with a thumb draw with a very very tight knock it's unlikely to happen so even though it looks like a dry fire because the arrow fell off there i don't think that's actually happened it was knocked on properly the release wasn't that that was actually a pretty clean release remember i shot like 50 hours before that's exactly the same that wouldn't have happened so the most likely cause would have been the string derailing. Uh, this is a problem with certain Asiatic style bows. And in fact, if you look at the comment section, the people who shoot Asiatic bows probably know this best. Uh, certain types of bows like the Mughal bows um, or the Manchu bows have a tendency to uh, disassemble themselves. So with a bit of torque or slightly imperfect alignment, the string on the limb is going to come off. So you see that shot, I can't do it slow motion enough, but my theory is that one of the uh, limbs is misaligned, and this is a problem which is well known with these bows, uh, and that's why it didn't come off clearly. That's my theory. I don't think it was a dry fire. Uh, I think the fact that the string came off right away, it simply uh, dislodged the arrow, flicked it off the bow, um, didn't shoot it. Uh, so no snap, no breakage, bow's completely fine. Um, and unfortunately, I think everybody who shared the video assumed it was a dry fire, and it actually wasn't. So it's cool, nothing's wrong with the bow. Um, a little surprising, but at the same time, it's kind of like, well, I kind of expected it. Um, it wasn't like it was a, a new uh, a disaster which shook me, so completely fine there. Uh, hello, uh, good morning to Sebastian from uh, Deutschland. Um, so, are we? So, um, some good questions from the chat. Well, before I start our form checks, so uh, where was I? Nash, the Elon bow. So, the string actually kind of going to the side after shot. Uh, that's that's basically what happened in that video you saw there. It's not meant to happen, but again, Asiatic bows tend to tend to do that and, and the elong bow because the it's fiberglass tends to twist a bit more easier so the answer is yes and i still think it's a great bow by the way it's a, it's a low price and by the way the credit of um nika archery or elong outdoor they've changed the price at least for the australian dollar version because i felt i felt it was too expensive um it was like 120 bucks uh, australian which is about about 100 us i thought it dropped down to about 80 us 
it's perfect. Um, as I said in the review, if I um, was going to start a traditional archery club and I want to begin a bow to everybody, I'd probably get something like that because it's so cheap, so easy to use and very light. But yes, uh, the, uh, the string did go off to the side, so what you saw there, Nash, probably same thing for you. Um, if, if you shoot bright, it's going to be completely fine 98% of the time. But the one time it happens, it kind of does go, eh, that's something to happen. So it's not a disastrous moment, they can make it out to be. Um, let's see, what else was there? Um, can you make an educated guess from playing Hunter as to what combo of rods could create a balance? So that, okay, okay, okay. This is a stabilizer thing, right? There's no correct combination of stabilizer. This is something which people obsess, obsess over a lot. It's getting the right stabilizers. The answer is there is no right stabilizer setup. It's what you personally feel is right for you. Where do you start? Just get a rod and work from there. Because no matter how long the rod is, you can still adjust the weight to make it better. So for example, if you buy a 28 inch long rod um, and it's too light, then add more weight to the front. Um, if you buy a 30 inch long rod and it's too heavy, then reduce the weight from the front. So you're still very flexible, same the side rod, same the extender. So even if you didn't quite get the ideal balance point for you, you can always adjust it by adding weight or changing the angle of the rods to make it work for you. So there's no right calculated answer. It's simply start with something and work from there. Most people won't need to go beyond a basic, you know, rod, side rod, V-bar setup. It's completely up to you. All right. So that was the stabilizer question. And hello to Sergio from Romania. And what else? Play Hunter again. I think the combo create that in the ground group. Again, I can't calculate it off you with your stats alone. Buy the rods. Make it work. That, that's the only advice I can give you. Once you have it on your bow, you can see for yourself what it will be. Because I can I can do calculations and guesses, I'll still be wrong. Because I don't know who you are, I don't know what your draw length is, I know what your balance point is, I don't know what bow you're using. I know what bow you're using, but how heavy it will be. Just buy the rods. All right? it's, you can't make a mistake with stabilizers. If you get something that's too heavy or too long or too short or too light, you can balance it out with something else. Okay, So don't stress about it too much. Um, what is the equivalent of the wind runner? That's a good question. I've got the catalog with me. I'm not sure if it's actually Junsing, because um, again, a lot of different companies will um, rebrand from different manufacturers. I'm gonna have a quick look at the Junsing catalog. I don't have it um, to display, but I've got a lot I believe the wind runner is the F168C. Just look at the catalog I've got in front of me, because um, I had a um, Johnny from the last stream. He actually sent me the catalog from the from Junxing. So Junxing, the or Junxing rather, um, the equivalent to the Windrunner is the F168C. Um, yes, it is. A 6 to 8 inch bow, up to 32 pounds. That's, ex that's exactly the one I'm thinking of here. I can't show you. I might, no, I'm not, not going to play around with um, the settings right now. Um, yeah, the F168C is the equivalent to the Windrunner. Uh, there's more branding on the limbs, but that, that's the answer you, to your question. Um, and what's next? Um, Byron, yes. Um, you're right, the beginner rods don't handle that much weight. Um, I have seen uh, a couple of people, uh, Mike, who used to shoot with, um, he, he used, I think, um, the, the, the El Cheapo um, cartel limbs or something. So um, he stacked a lot of weight, like you know, six or so, seven or eight like, weights on the end. It snapped. So there is one one way to be wrong is to buy a very cheap rod, stack lots of weights because it doesn't handle the vibration the weight very well. So after some shooting, it will crack. Apart from that, um, there's no mistake with that. Uh, Dimitri Zaitsev, uh, hello. What uh, uh, your opinion on YouTuber Gary Shine? Um, he's a longbowman. He's got ridiculously good back muscles. Um, and he's a nice person to watch, but I don't watch him a lot. I've seen some of his videos, but he, he's an interesting person to watch for English Longbow. Um, just, there, there aren't many uh, people um, shooting Longbow, so it's nice to watch some do that, but you know, I don't really follow him as much. Um, but he's, he's something, uh, someone worth watching. The weird pulsating light would probably just be my light and the camera's um, refresh rate. Um, it's at a 60 hertz, but it might not have to flick it correctly set. Um, but yeah, you know, Gary Shines, it's fun to watch. 
um, it might be hard for people to learn from because it doesn't really make a lot of tutorials or commentary videos. It's basically he shoots and it's, that's basically it. So um, it's, it's something worth watching. Would I recommend the WNA stabilizer kit? Um, why not? You know, it's it's a standard kit. Um, the stabilizers are going to be the same no matter what you do. There are certain brands, the high the higher cost high end stabilizers are going to be more stable because they're more they'll handle more weight, there'll be less vibration, but you start with the set. Play Hunter, don't overthink it. Just get stabilizers and you'll work it from there. Okay? In the next five or ten years, when you develop a very refined taste of what you find balanced or vibrating in your hand correctly, then you pick very good stabilizers which you like, or you try someone else's. But just get the stabilizers, okay? The answer is yes, I would recommend it. Without even looking at it, WNS, it's basically your standard SF um, stabilizer kit. Okay, so back to our form check. So there are a couple of people who sent me form checks uh, in the last couple of days. I'm just going to double check my uh, Facebook page to see if there's any um, more submissions because I want to do more. I want to. I want to do a bit more than that. So if anyone has a video in the chat right now, feel free to um, fling it my way. Um, so that way I can do a live commentary. Now the ones I have today uh, are actually not from beginners per se. They're from um, people who've been coached or trained. So it's actually quite interesting to see um, people who do shoot relatively well. So not just um, not just beginners, but intermediates who have good form down. So we'll have a quick look. Let me just close all windows here. Let's have a look over um, the video. So the first one is from uh, Abdullah. So let's have a look windows are open and we'll flick to our uh, feed right now Bing. here we go so this is from abdullah it's from um a few days ago now this is in slow motion so i'm going to um actually play it on like um two times speed or something because this is a really slow video which is great for form checking by the way but for our purposes i'm probably gonna i, I want to see a real time shot first even in double speed it's too slow so we'll, we'll see how it works so is that an email from somebody? Yes, thank you, Arnest. I'll check that in a moment. Okay, so this is from Abdullah first. Um, by the way, video bomb. That's cute. There we go. So this is not full speed. This is still um, slow motion. I mean, if you actually, it's a 30 second video. <laughs> if you actually watch the um, the full speed, I keep doing that, sorry. Watch the uh, the normal speed. It, it, um, it's nice to analyze this live, but uh, this is a bit too slow for me. Now, I can't see if Abdullah's using a clicker. If you are, let me know. But, just stopping here before our, our video bomber puts his hand up. Um, basically, this looks pretty good. Um, there's a nice T-frame. The shoulders are fairly level. They, they don't move throughout the shot. And the reason why I'm asking if there's a clicker is because there's very little movement. Normally, people who use clickers will expand a bit more. But it's a very subtle movement. So I'm not sure if the clicker being used. I can't see behind the riser. But for the most part, this shot is pretty good. So the stance is strong. The hips are in good alignment. They're not turning. Um, very good frame. Um, basically, this is at this point a picture perfect shot of someone shooting. This is really good, and this is why I like doing the form checks for you guys, because again, it's not just about people sending me like really mediocre videos and really obvious flaws. I want to also identify good shooting habits and good shooting form, and this is a good idea of what good shooting form is. So that's Abdullah. Now, is there anything we can improve? Let's have a quick look. Chat, what do you think? What do you think can, can we improve here? All right, so let's watch this again. Um, look at the right window up. So going through this, bing. By the way, setups. I'll get your video up in a moment. So first one here, Abdullah. Okay. Now what Abdullah uh, mentioned in his email to me was that his front arm, his bow arm, drops, and we need to watch this carefully. So we're watching this arm dropping before the shot, and I think I can see why. So we go from here and watch his front arm. And that should be the giveaway, is the way the hand moves. So if you try and then find the cause, it's tough. So it starts here at 28 seconds. It starts at this point. The hand moves in. 
and then the bow drops right before release. It's such a subtle flaw. And this is why the slow motion comes in handy here. Now, the big question is, is there a clicker? Okay. Now, oh, uh, uh, I've got a feeling there's no clicker, unless that was the clicker there. I'm watching the front of the arrow, the point here. You'll see it, this edge forward there. And then he releases, then comes out there. Was that the clicker? I wasn't sure from my angle, or this angle. Was that the clicker engaging? <laughs> it kind of proves because of facial hair. Yeah, it's true, true, true. The, 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 the beard is very manly, so I can't fault him for that. Um, but going back to the shot process, I'm not sure that was the clicker going off there. The clicker wouldn't go that way. But if that isn't a clicker, what I think would be is that there's a slight collapse. Now, I'm not sure how long the hold was in real time. But to address this thing here, this, I'm not sure what, if there's a clicker, what could be the cause is trying to push forward to engage the clicker, which by itself isn't bad, but it might be an imbalance between the push and the pull factors. So normally you would have a 50-50 balance between the pulling and the pushing. Some people would have to push out just a bit to engage full draw and get the clicker to go off. So if that's the case, that might cause that collapse. Um, but it's a very subtle thing here, but it does shift the arrow. For, like that, that's going to be like um, a, a whole point off, depending on what you're shooting at. If it's 18 meters, that's going to be from a 9 to an 8. So that's going to be a thing you need to watch out for, is that front arm. Is I think there's a bit of anticipation. Um, the shot hasn't gone off yet. Now, if the shot goes off and the hand moves, that's, that's okay, because it's already happened. But the hand moves just before the shot goes off. So... There's the yellow movement there. The release hasn't happened yet. There's the release. Nice release to bottom. Nice and clean. Um, that's a good slow motion release. But yes, that is a problem. So I can't recommend anything other than you need to keep this hand relaxed. Um, try not to anticipate the shot. Um, that that may be. And again, one of the things with slow motion to watch out for. A um, little commentary here. One of the things... To watch out for the slow motion is that sometimes you can misread the intent of the, of the subject. This is why things like the um, video assistant referee in football um, or soccer is controversial because when the referee watches the uh, video replay, in slow motion you see like a lot more intent behind what the person is doing. If someone is like going after the ball and they kick someone's shin, the slow motion makes it look intentional, right? Uh, but in real time, it just might have been a glance. You might look down and then it just happened. It's a split second. But in a slow motion video, that split second, that 0.3 of a second, might be 30 seconds. And in that time, it looks like you are plotting someone's demise. That's why when it comes to this video, which you're watching here, I don't want to look too detailed into this because in actuality, this would be like 0 0.01 seconds. It might be a very small reflex. It, it counts, but I can't really say this is what's actually happening here. So when I say he might be anticipating the shot, then... Um, that that might be the case, uh, but I can't say for sure. All I can say is just watch out for this. Um, it, it is moving. Um, it, it is a subconscious habit. Just don't try to anticipate the shot. I mean, it follows through nicely. It's a little forced. Oops, sorry about that. It's a little forced. That's a lot of um, Goldeneye videos on my recommended list there. Um, but yeah, it's a little, I don't know. It In slow motion, it's a bit hard to tell. I need to say this in real time and slow it down rather than slow motion because it's too easy to say this is anticipation. That's the, my two possible causes are anticipation and therefore you are tensing it before the shot or you are pushing to get through the clicker if you're using one. Um, is the guy in the back using veins on a trad bow? I don't think so. I think it's um, very large feathers. Again, this is a potato quality camera, so I can't see what it's using, but it's, I don't think it's veins. And those are very big for veins. Would probably be feathers. But that's the first video. So, what do you think, people? What do you think? Okay, so that's our first uh, form check. Um, so we'll close that. 
uh, the the thing there was mostly the bow hand um, moving, and he knows that. Uh, just thinking about why it happens or how it happens, uh, we can see that uh, you might change that. I'm getting more emails coming in, I think, for the uh, form checks. Woo. Okay, so I've got one more coming up. Let's see the other ones a bit in a, in a moment. Now the next one is from Sanox, who I believe is in chat right now. So begin uh watch you live, which is pretty cool. Uh, ooh, stuff. Um, let's see. I'll I'll preload a few just while we're waiting. Uh, okay, beautiful. All right, this should work fine. Okay, all right. So, um, any further comments for Abdullah? Looks pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, overall the shot's pretty good. Uh, I don't, the, these are videos which I, I don't really have anything specifically wrong to point out, other than really small things, uh, and that's good. You know, like I don't always want to say, "Oh, you're doing really badly," because you're not really. So our next video comes from Sanox. Uh, you're in chat. Hi, Sanox. Welcome to the uh, live form check. Um, let us have a look at Sanox. Here we go. So uh, this is a topless video. <laughs> Sorry, uh, YouTube, if you're blocking me. Um, but this is a nice back tension video. So we'll watch this. Thankfully, it's not um, ridiculous speed. So we'll see the shot live first. Um, and for those that are wondering what back tension looks like, this is a nice start. So we'll watch the shot. I'm not going to commentate too much. So there are two shots in the sequence. That's the first shot. And he'll load the second arrow, do a second shot. And... You know, first glance, there's not much wrong going on here. I think this is a pretty good um, form to work from. Second shot. And there we go. Now, I think the second shot took a bit more effort to get through clicking than the first shot. The first shot here, he draws back and he engages the clicker in one motion very cleanly. The second shot, and let's slow it down a bit. Here we go, let's go to, uh, I keep doing that. It's a big red button, so it gets tempting me. Uh, let's get 0.25 speed. So with our first shot, he draw, draw back. And watch the point of the clicker, and also his elbow too. So this first shot here, that's a very clean movement, no forward movement there. He'll come back through, it goes off and releases. There we go. Good reflex there. Second shot. It's a little slower. So we'll come through. Now I'll notice that the point will kind of shift forward just slightly. You see the same thing in his drawing elbow. There's some slight movement. Very slight. So it's coming through now. There's the click and it goes off. So we'll watch now it closer to our bit fast. Let's go to 0.75 speed. Because uh, this second shot's a bit bit more of a shaky one. So you can see the real elbow, there's a bit more of a shake there. Very subtle. Hardly worth mentioning too, by the way. <laughs> so it's, I think the shot's mostly fine. A um, couple of things uh, look in this video uh, as it is. Um, one thing I'd be careful of is the bow hand here. This is what I call the spear grip. Um, it's basically when your um, hand is fully extended. Now, this is actually isn't a bad thing for what he's doing because the things are not fully extended. This is a fairly relaxed grip. Now, if we look at how most people relax their hands, I need a demonstration. Be right back. I need a, I need a butt. Trusty Sage. Okay, what was that? Bing! Alright. So, um, what, what a lot of people do is they... Um, when they start shooting without with a sling or without a sling, they'll spear their hand forward like this. So you're gripping and you're holding it like this. Your hands are like, you're, you're told to keep your fingers off the riser, therefore you do this. Now, you can see in my hand, if you do this, or, you, or especially this, you, you hold it like that, and you do that. A lot of people do this. You're wearing a sling, keep the hand off the bow, and people do that. That's bad because there's a lot of tension there's a lot of tension in their hand here which will cause shake it's unstable now the normal relax if you don't do anything with, ouch if you don't do anything with your hand your basic your hand do, does this with no tension in your tendons or your muscles your hand just does this not this there's no clenching there's no extending it's just that 
right? So if you don't do anything at all, that's what your hand looks like. Put on a bow, same thing. That's a hand with no conscious muscle or tension, okay? No muscle movement, no tension. That's what you look like. Now, what Sanox is doing is kind of half-half. It's not going like that. It's also not keeping it gentle. So one point of improvement might be to just relax the hand a bit more. This is what he's doing. So he's consciously trying to keep the hand off the riser, but not overextending. That's not bad. From the side view, that's what he's doing. That's not bad. I think I think it's not going to be the cause of a shot. It's like a zero point one percent effect, that sort of thing there. So that's that's not bad. But you know, if you actually want to fully relax, it should look more like this, or at the forty five degree angle, it should look more like that. So that is not a big deal, but it might be a contributing factor if you're not quite hitting the goal with every shot. That's one thing. Going back to my video again. Let's switch windows. So yeah, that's one thing there. Um, oh yeah, good point there, sling. Is there a sling? Might be a finger, yeah, there's a finger sling, that's fine. Yep, cool. Um, so one point you make about Abdallah, by the way, the first video, uh, is that um, trust your sling more. Um, you are using a sling, I believe, so trust your sling more. This one's completely fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm a strung verse so lying around everywhere, yeah. Uh, that's uh, not always a good thing. Uh, Zip, me showing a form check, cool, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll see you in a moment. Um, yeah, uh, point there, possibly, um, but the, the pressure doesn't make the hang stiff, uh, when you draw it back, it doesn't do that, again, Sage, come back up, so, like, you, you don't need to force your hand to fight the bow, if you're pulling the bow back, I'm sitting down, sorry, but, you know, you can keep your hand relaxed, so you watch my hand here, I have no moves, so if you can see my hand here, you can pull it back as far as I can, it doesn't stand up. If you try to fight it, yes, you'll tense up, but if practice, I can't now, I think this way a bit, there we go. So with some practice, right, you you manage to keep the um, the hand relaxed. <laughs> I can't do the sitting down from my position here, that's the best I can do. So you can keep the hand relaxed, draw it back there. You don't have to um, tense it out like that. Like I said, it's, it's probably a conscious um, way to keep the forward pressure, but you don't actually need to do so. Okay, um, so that's the first part. Is It's a very small thing, very subtle thing, not the biggest uh, deal, uh, deal breaker. Um, but the other thing to look for here is the back tension. So the first part is that this first part here, not a big deal, um, but could be a bit more relaxed. But the second part is the back tension. Now, this is a good alignment, by the way. Nothing too wrong about this. Um, back is nice and straight. Now, could it be better? Probably. So, what to watch out for that is doing well is the scapular movement here. So, if you watch the way he moves his uh, scapula, slow it down a bit, 0.5 speed. Let's see his draw process. This is the second shot, just the one which is a bit shakier, but a good shot nonetheless. Okay, that's not bad. Just watch the movement here. So it comes around and it loads here. So, up to here, that's fine. You can see the scapula's moved in the right position. He is squeezing his back together. So there is back tension in the shot. Now, to make this better, what I, and this depends on your strength and your flexibility and how um, confident you feel in the shot process, I might try to get the elbow further behind your neck. Alright, so... This is good. Um, this is not that high. This is acceptable. Um, one pro tip is uh, if the elbow and the forearm point towards the grip, it's okay. And that's fairly in line. Um, I could drop this a little lower and bring it further behind your head. Like basically stretch out a bit more. Uh, that might be the... If I was your coach and I was giving you some pro advice, I'd probably say that that's the one thing that could make your shot better would be to get the elbow further behind your neck. So at the moment, it's in line or slightly out of line. Um, bring it further back, like this way, behind your neck, and you will probably be in a nice sweet spot because that's 
a good back engagement, but I think you can do a bit more than that. So you, if you drop your elbow just a bit, that would basically, let's try again, let's do the motion. So what I'm looking for is a slight upward motion than a downward motion. That's a loading motion there. So there's the upward, but it stays up. I think you can, if you bring the elbow down just a bit on your last movement, you can load it more efficiently onto this part of your back there. Okay, so I feel that this draw process is up. It's held in this part here too much. I think you just clamp it down, or crunch it down. You'll get a bit more tension here, and you'll bring your elbow back around more. We'll bring more across here. So this, I think, is good. I think the shoulders are nice and level here. This one's not popping up. Um, you, most people will find there is a little dimple in the front part of the shoulder here. Um, it's not as pronounced in his shoulders, so there could be a bit more alignment, but nothing wrong here. Um, arms fine, uh, but the back tension could be a bit better, I think. Uh, but I mean, this is like, you know, 80% of the way there. It's just a few tiny things to make it better. So if you, if you feel the shot is a little weak, then you might find that movement, that slight elbow rotation further back, might give you more back tension and therefore more feeling of power. Okay, so that's my analysis of Sanox there. What do you think, guys? Good, yeah, Sanox, thank you. So you've changed your grip, that's nice. That's, that's really good. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the more advanced technique would be the back tension, to try to get the elbow further back. I'll try and show you again. So if you, camera, camera with me here yeah so try to get this a bit further back if possible so you're doing this your back tends up which is good if you manage you kind of come in load and then get a bit further back you feel that your muscles squeeze together a bit more all right okay people send me stuff cool uh i've got my phone here so i might be sitting and seeing a few more things all right, um, let's go to our next one. Oh, by the way, uh, yeah, uh, if you find you if you're shooting uh, like shirtless for for check video, just watch your your chest. Um, back when I used to do it, um, that used to be very hard to burn across the uh, the front chest. So um, yeah, that, that's always a risk. All right, uh, quick chat on the uh, quick check on the chat. Um, <laughs> Twig forty six. Do you want to try archery? Yeah, try archery. Why not? I try to a lot of lot for you mentally and physically. Okay, um, player hunter. If the string is digging into your chest, do you need a chest guard, or can you compensate by opening your stance? Both. Um, opening your stance, having the right shoulder alignment, and drawing correctly uh, will generally avoid this. The chest guard is is meant for two or three things. Um, well, two things really. One, it's to prevent people with large chest particularly females, but men too, um, from getting caught on the chest. Two, it flattens clothing. You can shoot fine without it. But the reason why most professional shooters use a chest guard is to remove all doubt. You don't want to have a situation where the one shot you do catches your shirt and therefore it comes off the wrong way. Um, if you stand correctly, yeah, it won't be a problem. But the thing is that with the target style of shooting, the modern technique, the string comes so close, because the closer you are to the center line, the more the better you shoot, right? We have to compensate by opening stance and triangulating, but the closer it is, the better it is. It's the closer it is, the more likely you are to hit your arm, hit your chest. So it helps. Do you need one? No, but it helps. It removes that element of doubt. Um, I've shared this story a few times, but you know, I had a, uh, a fellow archer who shot in a club competition and she was wearing a very large raincoat. And every single shot was pack, 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 pack. It was avoidable. It, it, it was a sleeve, it was the front jacket. You could have used a, like a bandage to wrap the sleeve. You could have worn a chest guard to flatten the front part of the chest. But every single shot was a miss because she was just hitting her um, jacket every shot. And the arrow would lose half its energy and just flop down 30 meters from the target. It's frustrating. Okay, so it's avoidable. Do it. Um, where are we? Um, okay. Oh, uh, Perry or Johnny. Um, does it matter where the string is on your sight window when aiming with the sight? As long as it's consistent, right? I find it much have to start far the left. Okay. Um, Bo. Uh, all right. So, does it matter exactly where your string is on the riser? You can probably see that, right? There we go. 
All right, does it actually matter? The answer is, well, if it's consistent, it doesn't matter. As long as you have the putt. So some people will line up like there at full draw. If you're using a site, it's kind of there where my eye is. And you might have it there. So you're probably seeing this at the moment, uh, Johnny, assuming you're right-handed. I think you are. Um, the problem with having it oddly far to the left is where's your reference point, right? But I, I, I see, used to shoot like that. When I, did my, when I first did Olympic style archery, I had the string picture way off. Like, sight was like in the middle here. String was way off to the left. And I was shooting like a shotgun. It was just crap. And it was only when I started reading books on how to shoot. Because like the coach can't see sight, of sight picture. They can't see string alignment. So they're relying on you to have a consistent reference point. Now, I can generally tell as a coach who has a good string picture if they're grouping because they're subconsciously lining up correctly. But if someone who's spraying everywhere, the question would be, well, where's your sight picture? People will often fix their sight or their plunger if they're using one before recognizing sight picture because they're not taught this concept. But you need to make sure that you have um, the right um, alignment, otherwise it's really hard to see what you're doing wrong. So if you're this far to the left, where exactly is that gap? You're basically, you know, it might sound weird, um, Johnny, but you're basically gap shooting with a sight. That's, that's why I don't like this off alignment here. If you're that far off to the side, you're basically gap shooting. And if it's anything off this way or this way, then that's going to cause deviations in the shot on the target. That's why if you're going to line the string up, line it up with the sight, which should be here, or the inside of the riser. Both points, both points are very consistent. Off to the side, you lose consistency. You're essentially going instinctive or gap with the sight, and while it may work at close distance, further out, it is much harder to get the same alignment. So I would recommend you try to change your sight picture and string alignment so that you have something more consistent. And that's really the key is repetition and consistency. What might work some of the time isn't good enough. What works most of the time, all the time, is desired. All right, um, back to player hunter. Do chess card size match shirt sizes? Somewhat, yes. Um, you know, small, medium, large, buy one, which, you know, bear in mind that you are wearing a chest guard over clothing. If you're just wearing a shirt, it'll be more tightly against your chest. If you're wearing over a jacket, then that's going to be larger than what you normally buy, okay? So just to keep in mind, chest guards are adjustable, but um, depends on what you're wearing it over. Keep that in mind. Um, would a good rule of thumb be on string alignment that the string should be somewhere between the front, in front of the sight pin, in front of the riser? No. Um, rule of thumb is align the string with the inside of the sight. Try to get it touching that sight. So that's the sight there. Try to touch it here or on the other side here. There are, there are many ways to do this, right? But okay, let's do it this way. So that's the sight. should be here, okay? That's the string picture there. The reason why is you don't want to obstruct the target. And you don't want to have it too far off where any deviation is going to cause like centimeters off target there. So a millimeter here, a centimeter off there or more. So the more you have this right, the easier it is to be consistent. Um, if you're doing like something like this, I, I sometimes shoot like this. Again, you start having that deviation and obstruction. You won't see the target you know, past the string. If you get any further out there, then there's too much deviation, too much spread. Because you, you can never get this right. When it's like, if it's front of your eye here and you're not focused, you can't get that right. Now, try again. Like, if you're doing this and you're looking through me at the target here, you can never quite get that right. Okay? So, if this stabilizes to this and you do this every single time, that will change your grouping dramatically. If you're doing this or this or somewhere here, then you will never get it right every single time. So that's my feedback for you. All right, let's have another look at the video. I've got some more people sending me in. I've got one from Arnis here. So that's Sanox. Thank you, Sanox. All right, Arnis just emailed me one. I've got a few more in the inbox. Too. Whoa, that's a lot of people. Um, let's have a look at a few more people because this is worth it. All right, 
I haven't seen this yet, so I'm gonna watch this one at a time. Let's look at Arnus. Arnus, hello! Uh, very nice. Um, let's look at Arnus's traditional shooting. Here we go. This is a happy shooter. We Alright, let's have a look here. Haven't seen this yet. Let's watch it first. Okay. Uh, I like how there's multiple shots. Always analyze patterns. Don't analyze a single shot. It's a longbow too. Nice. Fortunately, it's a cell phone. So it's a little shaky on the focus. That's okay. See a few more. Okay. And I think I've got the pattern down now. Uh, shooting quickly, like I do, which is not necessarily a good thing. Let's slow it down. Thank you, YouTube. Half speed. Alright, let's pick a random shot here. So, man, it looks so epic in slow motion. <laughs> in real life, it's kind of like, yeah, no one cares, but in slow motion, it looks pretty epic. Alright, here we go. So, I don't like the finger of the arrow. Is that a finger of the arrow there? I don't like that. That is a finger on the arrow. And you can't do that on a short arrow, by the way. So, you're doing a long arrow, which is okay. Uh, that is something I would recommend you don't do. Uh, you can do it, of course. I don't like that. That that's an accident waiting to happen, Arnis. So uh, I'd be mindful of where you put your finger, especially if you ever change arrows. You actually can't do that. That's gonna be painful if you shoot through your finger. It has it, ha it has happened, by the way. So not a big deal. But that is something which. Okay, the reason why I'm picking out the finger. Switching back to my cam, the reason why I uh, I kind of go. Um, like watch out for the arrow on the on the in the arrow, is that it will mask um it will mask form problems, um if if you don't draw correctly with the right hand tension or the right finger pressure, then that will mask it. It's probably better to draw correctly than to use a stopgap measure to do it for happening. So there's a small thing there, but it can hide um a form problem. Um, your description says nothing by the way, unless you updated it while I was watching, I'll, I'll refresh it. Um, what is this then? Oh, there we go. So, 16 kilos, that's around 20 odd pounds, 10 meters, and bow hand twitching, yeah, okay. Alright, so small stuff there. Uh, but yeah, so one thing to keep in mind is, I, I don't like that, because it, it uh, only people who really need to do, to stop their coming off and do that. Um, you can say I'm pointing fingers. Yeah. I give you a three out of ten for that pun. All right. Yeah. No, uh, it's it's it. I know why you do it, Arnus. You keep that from falling off, but the arrow shouldn't fall off if you draw correctly. That's what I'm saying here. Back to the bow. Uh, Sage, come back here. Okay. So, it's about the, if if you keep the back of the hand flat, you will turn the string outwards. If you hunch your hand up like this you will tend to cause the arrow to go inward because you are turning in. So either you are knocking it off or your hand is forming knuckles so you're actually twisting the string inwards. That's why if you draw correctly with the hand flat like that, it would not come off the string. No matter what you do. So just be mindful that if you are masking the problem, then you're not addressing the problem. That's one thing. Um, so, back to our, clip, our video, so that's one thing, is just watch the, um, the thing in the arrow there, and mask, so that, that, let's actually see if Arnus is drawing the bow correctly, it's hard to see from this particular angle here, knuckles, there you go, if you look carefully, there are knuckles on the draw, so you can see the fingers move inwards, that's likely what's causing the arrow to come off, that, if that is a problem, it's like the cause is the way the knuckles come up here. So we'll draw there. It's a fast draw, by the way. So there is a slight inward turn with the uh, the, the hand there. Very small thing. That's, in my opinion, what's likely causing your concern about the arrow coming off. It's just you can, you can keep the hand flatter than that. I know it's part of your anchor point, but that's also a thing there. So. That might be a thing. I, I don't think you need to put the arrow, um, your finger on the arrow. If you draw it correctly, it's not going to be a problem. So, that's that's the bow hand issue. Alright. 
back to normal speed. What else can we identify here? Stance is okay. I don't like this draw. It's fast. Which is not wrong. But the tempo's off. All right. One thing you'll see people do with uh, like the experienced shooters, they shoot not slowly. You don't want to take too long on the draw. At the same time, you don't want to draw too quickly where you're losing your anchor. Okay. Well, slow down the half. Even a half speed is still very fast. So don't go down to half speed. Watch where you anchor the shot. So, oof, we've got to slow it down. Quarter speed. Slow down, Niners. You're not doing yourself any favors with shooting quickly. Okay, here we go. So, we'll watch the alignment first. So, when you're learning archery, you have to break down the steps one by one. Alright, this is, this is for a good advice in general. Um, break down the steps one by one. Because when you do everything really quickly, what are you doing exactly? Like, how do you know you're doing it right? If you're going from, you've knocked the arrow, then you draw back... And then you release. Like they're, they're, you need to make sure that every step is correct. What I normally see with learners, and which which is a good thing, is they would go quite slowly. The slow draw is not the, not the best thing to do, but it's part of your learning process. But they'll stand, they'll look at the shoulders right, they'll lift the bow, and they'll pull back, and they shoot. That's a better tempo to work with than going whoosh like that. Because as we'll watch this in slow motion, what's your anchor point? Because you'll see it's quite erratic. So, this part here in slow motion looks okay, okay? But even at slow motion, there's no point where you are evaluating the target. You need to pre sight or kind of imagine, estimate the target. And because you're shooting a bare bow, this is quite important, alright? So, you're shooting 10 meters is quite easy, but at full speed, I, I'm not seeing a point where you are visualizing what you are doing. I've told a lot of people in my club, by the way, like you have to visualize before you do. If you're pulling the bow back and then you visualize, it's too late to do anything about it. So I feel that there's more, you need to kind of think about what you're doing before you do it. So take a break. See, look, look the way you're loading. Before you start pulling back, stop. Pause, look at the target, breathe, get your rhythm in, then start the process. Because you can't undo an arrow, <laughs> right? So I always say, think of the shot before you do it. Imagine yourself doing it before you do it. And then play it out the way you thought it would play it out. If you go back to um, half speed. So going back to um, shots here. So watch the, um, the anchor. Ideally, it would come just forward of anchor, then tuck it in. Now what? Arnes is doing that, that's not too bad there. You can see again, the knuckles coming up there. But the I think the previous shot was more um, indicative of what he needs to improve on. Definitely anchor. No, let's go back to the previous one. Here we go. So watch the draw. And there we go. So he's coming back to pass his uh, mouth. Then he's coming back into his jaw. And that's not ideal for an anchor. Um, it changes position. Watch the arrow. Actually, not too bad. It comes forward, pulls back. So, I think one thing is, when you draw, try to find your anchor point, there we go, in, try to find your anchor point a bit better, okay? Um, also, watch your head position. Your head should be quite still when you shoot. Uh, and unfortunately, your head does move a bit to find the right um, picture there. So, there's a draw, and then you kind of have some slight movement. Let's do a next shot. So, there's a the draw. Okay, that's not too bad. It's not a bad anchor, but uh, I'd rather you find this a bit more comfortably. One thing to watch out for is you are shooting towards the ground. It is better to bend your waist, like bend at the hip, like tilt forward and keep your shoulders straight rather than lifting your back elbow and dropping your lower, lower your bow arm. That's probably the bigger thing I worry about here is your shoulder alignment. Because if you watch the, um, the way you draw, front shoulder part, it's out of alignment. So this will ch significantly change the way you load the weight. Basically, instead of being like straight up and it comes straight through your, um, your bones, you're loading this up to your rotator cuff here. So there's more pressure 
on this part of your shoulder, okay? That's what I worry about there. In terms of the injury risk and just to fill in a back tension, is that is going to cause problems for you, and that's way too high for the shot now. So I would recommend that you bend, you, you bend forward and keep the, sh the shot in line instead of pointing the bow down. If you just point the bow down, you're going to throw your alignment off there. So that's the other thing. So my two, actually, I'll, I'll just go talk quickly in the, uh, the demonstration. So what I recommend, again, is instead of going, if you're shooting a target down there, unfortunately, this can't fit. Oh, I'm actually back. It's okay. So instead of going, like, pulling down, like, sorry, I'm doing the right, the right way, the wrong way, which is injury prone, is moving the bow down. So if I'm shooting down that way, you pull back and you aim down, you're basically I'm doing my shoulder, it's popping up. It's very hard to get the right alignment, but pulling the bow down, because that is going to put more pressure here. That's going to hurt. Um, that, that's an injury risk, and also it's just in general, it's just very weak. Instead, what you should do, straight shoulder alignment, Drop the shoulder there, bend down. See that? I can go down, and go up, down, up. This is a weird meme to do, <laughs> but the point I'm trying to show is that I can alter the angle of my shot, whether it's high or low, by shifting through my hips and not with my front arm. Because if I do that on a 45 pound bow, down, up, down, up, the alignment is off. So that's my big recommendation. So for you, Arnis, a couple of things there, or three things, is one, slow the shot down a bit. So visualize the shot before you do it, play it through your head, and then follow the motions. So don't rush each shot, because you can't take the shots back. Two, uh, watch your anchor point. Um, so when you draw, try to think about where you're anchoring. This is why visualis visualization is so important. If you draw it quickly, you're not mentally ready to execute the shot. So instead of going tucking it in and finding it here, and a lot of people do this, try to think about, I'm going to hit the exact spot, hit it there, and then finish the shot. Number three is just watch your shoulder alignment. That does hurt, by the way. Ouch. Um, I hate demonstrating the wrong technique because it hurts. Uh, but yeah, um, Tilt using your waist or your hips, not using your front arm to pivot, because that will change your alignment. Phew, all right. Um, where are we? I'll see yours in a moment, Zeus. Um, once technique is good, it's fun to experiment with increasing speed and seeing if maintain accuracy. No, I disagree. Um, what's the point of shooting faster? What's the point? I mean, yes, you could snap shoot, but there's I, I would not prioritize speed over correct form. There, there's no, it's, it's a bragging point, right? It's, it doesn't really prove anything. So, but if you shoot faster, you will sacrifice consistency. There is, there is, that's it. That there's no, you can't shoot quickly and maintain the same consistency as if you're shooting at normal pace. You sacrifice consistency for speed. I think that was a I disagree, Play Hunter. No, it's not fun to do that because you you drop form and you practice like that. You breed in bad habits because look, you, you watch so many people. Maybe it's really not for you, but for me, I see so many beginners around the world shoot quickly because it's cool. It's not because they shoot like crap. Okay, don't shoot like crap and reinforce bad habits because you're not proving anything. Yeah, you can shoot half an hour faster than I can. Actually, I, I see this in my range a lot. I had I had guys in my range shoot trap Bebo, and no, not 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 speed shooting like Glass Anderson, but just shooting quickly. Let's go plop plop plop. They flung twelve arrows in around twenty seconds, and it's shotgun all around the target. Now I've got four minutes to shoot six arrows, and I'm shooting gold 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 gold. Doesn't mean I'm good, but I'm achieving my objective. I'm hitting the target. But the person next to me. It's just reinforcing, oh, I can rough hit the target, I can do it really quickly. So what? You're not hitting the simple target, you're just shotgunning. So there's a point where you must just go close your eyes, just random number generate. If you're not shooting where you intend to shoot, like actually hitting the mark, then there's no point in doing it quickly. 
And if you want to prove something by shooting quickly, so what? Like, no one's counting, no one's measuring you. I disagree. I do not think it is fun to experiment with speed. No, consistency all the time. No, it doesn't. No, no, but no, you, you, I think you're completely wrong, Play Hunter. No, if you even assuming correct form, increasing speed does not push yourself. No, shoot accurately. Why is shooting faster? Why is that challenging? If you want challenge, shoot a smaller target. Shoot further away. Shoot from a horse. Okay, but if you want to increase your rate of fire from one hour every twenty seconds to one hour every ten seconds, that's not much of a challenge. It, 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 what you're saying, basically, is people should snap shoot. Snap shooting is a compromise. It is not a feat. You don't snap shoot well. You shoot well in your normal base form, and then you adapt to what situation. If you have to snap shoot because you're shooting a moving target and you're hunting, then you can do that only if you have good form to begin with. But you don't practice snap shooting to get it right. You will, your body and your brain will adapt to the situation that you do. I still disagree with you. It is not fun to experiment with snap shooting. I think it leads people down the wrong path of learning. If you want to do it for fun, that's your call. I'm not here to tell you what you can and can't do. I think it's a poor way to learn. No coach, no instructor will tell someone to practice shooting quickly to reinforce form. Because shooting quickly sacrifices form it doesn't reinforce form. So do it for fun, but it is not challenging. Um, it doesn't prove anything. It doesn't push you. It pushes you to shoot incorrectly, risk injury, and lose form. What about moving targets? If you want to shoot moving targets, shoot moving targets. No one's stopping you from doing that, right? But what's the, what are you proving? A moving target is timing. It's not about shooting quickly, it's about timing. People who swing like a, like a cup or a tennis ball, it's not necessarily about a trick shot, it's a timing shot. All right? it, it, it'd be like Lars Anderson shoot like a floating thing in the air. That's not a, a test of speed, it's just a test of timing. So it doesn't push you to do anything here. Basically all forms of archery practice are against stationary targets. Even when riding on a horse, you're shooting a stationary target. It doesn't prove anything else. All it does is that it, if you do it well, you have your timing down. But if you are just shooting... Because the thing is that people sacrifice form to try to hit the target. This applies to both a stationary target as well as a moving target, right? Practice is about reinforcing good habits and good form to enable you to shoot more difficult targets. If you are going to shoot targets that are moving or you're shooting super quick what exactly are you doing okay it's mostly going to be about repeatability and consistency any form of practice which removes repeatability or consistency should not be considered practice it's just fun that's my overall opinion so some more quick videos just while we're waiting for um well we kind of blown through our time here let's do a few more just while we are we're still here so let's go to Zeus. I'll check the YouTube version rather than the uh, Google version. No, I don't have a horse to shoot from a horseback. Okay, let's see Zeus have a shot. Here we go. All right. Oh, okay. Ah, vertical videos. Let's have a look here. Zeus, what did I just say? <laughs> what did I say? Okay, go back around 15 minutes. Um, look at my feedback to Arnis. And um, <laughs> look at that. Um, that is um, interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah. That is interesting. Um, let's watch it again. Uh... That, that was uh, comical, sorry, I don't mean to laugh in a bad way, but um, there are things you should watch out for my last, in the, in the, in the last um, form review. Um, okay. I, I, I see what you're doing here. Alright, so I, I want to make a point about this. Don't let the bell like this. Uh, it's a safety thing. Uh, the reason why you don't load like this, you can 
and in fact some forms of traditional like Chinese archery do load like this because it's faster in a in a military context. You shouldn't do this because in a range environment, if you ever shoot at a range, you are pointing a loaded bow towards somebody else. You can't do this. There's someone standing next to you or someone behind you. This is dangerous. I would not recommend this. Now, it doesn't mean the bow will suddenly shoot itself and it will hit someone in the back. This isn't a gun, I know. But I don't like that loading method because it, it moves the bow away from target. And normally a range rule is you only point the bow at the target. And this is pointing a bow that's now loaded away from the target. It's a safety thing. You never see people do this in a range because they're told not to. But um, I don't like this. There's no reason why you need to do this. It's usually easier and faster to load normally. So load from behind the bow, not from in front. Um, again, I, I've only seen people do this as self-taught archers. I just, I don't like that. It's a safety thing that kind of pings me. Now the rest of the form. So like I said with answers for a form check, is if you're going to aim at a target down below, and it's, it's a good habit. If it's possible to elevate the target, do so, okay? You can't always shoot at level height, especially in your home, because you know there's a backyard. You might shoot over the fence or something. But this is just not good practice at all. Um, if if you're shooting that low, then you can't change the way you shoot here to shoot a lower target. Like I said to Arnis, if you're going to shoot a lower target, keep the arm straight and then bend down. This is not particularly good because there's no form here. Um, I'm not saying this to kind of make fun of you. I'm saying this because you're, you're just trying to hit the target. You're not actually practicing form here. So you're looking down the target. Oh, sorry, slow down. This is going too fast for me. I keep doing that, sorry. Um, yeah, it's a bit... It, it's too target focused. Alright, so look at the target down. If you slow it down enough, there's an anchor, but if you play normal speed, there, there's not much emphasis on doing it right, it's just shooting hit the target. So that's, that's one thing to watch out for. I don't know the loading thing we mentioned before, um, but this to me is just not right. Um, it's injury prone, it's a bit dangerous the way you load. Uh, I, I would always recommend, if you're going to do this, bend, don't shoot. I mean, even things like, this might sound silly, but even sitting down or kneeling is going to be better for your shoulders than shooting like this. This will put you, I mean, if a light bow, then you won't feel it, but anything heavier than this, it's going to be painful to do, okay? Just be careful that. Uh, just look after your shoulders, especially if you're a young person. Look after your shoulders. Um, but yeah, this is something I can't really analyze. Uh, I'll make a point. Um, maybe a little mini rant. But the point I'll make here, um, email me, is it, by the way. Email, send me the link through email um, in my official email address. Um, but yeah, like I said before, what, what, I, what, I, what I think is going on here, I can't analyze this because this isn't so much a form check as much as it's you shooting. People who do form checks, so email me, is it? Um, don't send a chat. Um, People who do form checks will, where possible, capture multiple angles um, and focus on particular things. So Abdullah was focusing on his uh, bow hand dropping. Um, Sanox was focusing on back tension, and he's emailed me before. Um, Arnis was focusing. <laughs> oh, you're focusing on oh, you're focusing. Um, and Zeus, unfortunately, I don't, I don't really see a focus. I think it's just you shooting. If you're going to do a form check, try to not, this might sound weird, don't try to aim at a target. Where possible, and this is your um, your your form check, or your, your process, and that's right, I'm going to multitask, give it a zip. Um, uh, duh, pardon me. Okay, sorry, zip. Um, what was that? Yeah, um... Try to not hit a target. So set up a target where it is easy to shoot. Okay, so if you're shooting in a club environment, then um, blank belt target. If you're shooting at home, don't shoot a small target down below. Shoot a very big target so you're not worrying about where to hit. Because if you are target focused, you sacrifice form to hit the target. And the danger of that 
is that it leads to a path of thinking, if I can hit the target, then what I'm doing is okay. Unfortunately, that's not the case. What you should focus on is form first, accuracy later. The form can be adapted to shoot well. Whereas if you shoot at the target, it might be fine at 5 meters at home, but if you're shooting at a 10 meter target or 20 meter target that's higher up, then what's, what you're doing here won't work for you when it's up there. And you won't magically change to do so. You will have to consider that the correct way to shoot should be the focus. Okay? So that's my, uh, I don't have a lot of feedback for you, particularly Zeus. It's mostly, you need to kind of set up a proper shooting environment before you get more advanced feedback. Basically, what I'm saying is, get this right. Get, your, get this T-shape right and adapt this T-shape to shoot at a different elevation rather than changing your shoulder alignment to do this. So they're only going to point the bow down and hunch your shoulder and draw it up here. Get your shoulder straight and bend down. That's my feedback for you. So it's a little harsh then, um, but you know, I, it, it's, it's painful to watch because I can't give you much feedback beyond do it safely. So load safely, get your alignment right and bend down and don't um, try to do that. Okay. Yeah, I thought so. It, it, it's not it's not so much like the issue of, of precision, but yeah, it's it is an environment which or a setup which doesn't promote good shooting habits. That's what I'm trying to say here. I'm not saying like you know date the target, but that that to me you, you can't learn shooting like this. I understand shooting in the backyard, shooting a low target. I do it at home as well. Um, but where possible, I'll put it on a chair or something, or you know, slightly higher up to make it less stressful on here. Um, but yeah, it, it's mostly like just watch out for um, the shoulder alignment. So for you, shoulders first, get the T shape, and then work from there. All right, let's see somebody else. All right. I've got a couple more videos from Sanox here, but I don't have that time to do it today. Uh, let's see if I can get a few more from the email. Let's close it before, sorry. Uh, let's see. I've got a few from Kitty, which I might have a quick look at. And I've got one from Zip coming in. Uh, let's do one from Kitty. And... Aha, uh -huh, it's an attachment. All right, so I'll load some of these. I preload these because it comes in threes. Oh, this is a bit more confusing. Ah, confusion. All right, I'm full. Okay, we're going back. Yeah. All right. I I need to open multiple screens for this. And okay, let's do. Thanks, Zip, by the way. I've got your email. I'll do the front view first. All right, here we go. So this is Kitty. Chicken, chicken chat for a bit here. Oh, sorry, Arnest. Is there any uh, exercises for to train bending the waist? No exercise, it's just bend the waist. It's something you do, not something you train for. Um, you train this correctly um, and you bend. Uh, you, that's all you do, you bend at the waist. So don't drop your arm, keep this straight, bend down. That's that's basically it. There's no um training for it, you just do it, do it. It's why people shoot field or 3D who shoot different elevations. You don't you, you can't really train for it unless you shoot that particular um arrangement. But the basic thing is just just bend. Um I know look, look up to downwards. It's something which you have to um you know just do. I have no advice for that. Alright, so on to Kitty. Alright, I think it's working now. Alright. So, let's have a quick look. Single shot, it's fine. Mm. Alright, missing the bow arm there to, uh, to cut off. We'll see the different angle later. Um, I will always preface my analyses with this. Always defer to your coach, okay? So, I know you're being coached. Um, you have more experience and advice. I'm just going to provide a different perspective as to what I think could be done. But if you're being coach, always listen to your coach first. Follow up what your coach tells you, not what some random person tells you, because you want consistency in your development. Your coach knows you better than I do. So for anyone sending me videos and you're actually having lessons or being coached, just bear in mind, I'll, I'll, I'll say what I see, but if you're being told something different, then follow what your coach does, okay? So um, let's get back to Kitty's video, because there are, I'll see something here, which I think could be slightly better. 
I think again, uh, the the fundamentals are great. Um, stance strong, nice T shape there. All everything's looking really nice here, and the shot rhythm is nice. So it's not too long, not too short, nice and clean. This is a clean shot. I don't have a lot to say about this. Now, if I was to pick nitpick or perhaps offer a suggestion, watch that front shoulder. Might be rising. Can I slow it down on YouTube? On oh, no, our Google? Yes, I can. Watch the front shoulder. I think there's a slight upward move from the front shoulder there. Watching. Bang. All right. This is exactly what I used to do, by the way. Um, I, I used to do this in some of my old practice videos, and my coach loved them when I did this. So what I did was I, I have, you might see in my videos, in my back room, in my backyard, I've got a brick wall, okay? Um, and what I did was I practiced shooting against the brick wall. So my coach, when he watched me shoot, would see on the brick pattern where my shoulder was lifting up. And it's only like a, a couple of millimeters, but that shoulder popping up was a cause of a lot of small problems. It's very subtle, but the brick pattern showed that. Okay, so look at this one here. Okay, it's a very subtle thing. You might not be doing it at all, Kitty, but it's something you might want to note is watch the relationship between the arrow and the shoulder. If that changes for the shot, it might be a sign that the shoulder is rising. In this case, I don't think it is. It's I'm not sure what target you're, you're, what distance you're shooting at, uh, but it may be that your shoulder, your front shoulder, might be moving up just very slightly. But in this case, I think it's pretty consistent. Yeah, I don't think it's a problem. But for those watching, then it's a good thing that if you're filming yourself and you're shooting at a relatively close target, watch that, that gap between the shoulder and the arrow. That's one to find out if your shoulder is rising. It's just aligning it and watching yourself. You, there's something you can only see through video. And that's one thing. So the front view, nothing wrong about this. I would, I would say it's particularly problematic. Everything here is looking pretty good. Um, if there's one thing I might suggest changing, um, is perhaps thinking about starting to draw a little higher. This is a very straight draw, but it's more bicep in this movement. This, this, this isn't wrong, uh, but you might find some people have an easier time starting a little higher, um, at about eye level, around the nose, but I think this is fine. This, this is more chin level, straight to the anchor. Um, if you want to experiment a bit, try to start at full draw, so start at this position, start higher at your kind of nose level and then pull it back to your chin. You'll find that the rotation might work a little easier. Um, up to you, I think the way you've got it here is pretty good. That's nice and tight, good anchor point there, and it comes through really cleanly. But uh, if you want to try something a little different, see if it works for you, start a little higher. Um, let me show this to you at some point. <laughs> it's because I keep saying this. Okay, um, points for the purple shirt. Yeah, so. Um, instead of going straight in low, like that, well, that's really high resolution, um, straight in, like that, uh, you might think about starting a little higher. So start here, then come down here. You might find it slightly easier to have a rotation there. Um, I'll check the other video for the bow, the bow release. But uh, yeah, a lot of people start low, like this. They can be a little hard on the shoulder sometimes, a very straight draw. But uh, if that works for you, go for it. But uh, um, you might try a little higher. So start a little higher. Then come here, like come a little diagonal downwards, jam it in, drop the shoulder, and then it should be pretty good there. But um, shot looks a clean. That's a clean shot. Obviously from someone who's practice. Uh, let's have a quick look at the other ones. They're from the back in the front view. Uh, this is the back view, I guess. All right, so we've got a better view of this thing here. Pink, 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 pink. There we go. All right. Oh, it's a high quality kitty. <laughs> is there something more than 360p? <laughs> Thanks anyway, but um, just I'm, I'm trying to see the clicker point because I can't see this pixel. <laughs> no, Gotta got have fun here, right? All right, so the pixel I'm looking at, um, this big purple pixel. All right, okay. Um, I'm checking the alignment here. I'm 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 guessing a short distance, like 10 to 15 meters or something. That's my guess. Um, uh, what I'm looking at here is drawing it back. I think this shot to be different than the other shot. It might be the angle, but I reckon you could drop this elbow down just a bit more. Um, get more of the back tension going here. So I'm, I've got to slow it down. Um, single shots. Oh wait, there's no speed setting. Oh, no, there is. That's a risk. All right, let's get to quarter speed. So let's play this. 
and then watch the shoulder. I want to see slight downward movement, and there it is. I feel you could engage a bit more in your back muscle if you drop this just a bit, like, you know, like an inch or something. If you get that crunch down, you'll probably feel a lot more engagement in this muscle here. So that's just my general feedback. I think it's fine. Um, but you could just do a, a try something a little different if that, that's something you might want to try. Is try and get this elbow down a bit more. Otherwise, ooh, a little tense on the grip there. Bow sling, kitty? I can't see the pixels from here. If you're not using a bow sling, it's fine. Um, that's a, a slightly tense release. Is the bow dropping? The answer is... No, the shoulders are fine here, by the way. Nothing wrong with the shoulders. Eh, it's fine. The release is good. I'm, I'm, nothing wrong with that. Um, just a little tense on the grip on the release there. It doesn't drop naturally, so you're still gripping it very tight. The knuckles are showing in this pixel here. So, tight grip there, just relax a bit more on the grip. That's probably where you need to be at. We'll do one more from the back. That's going to switch over. Um, and there's the back view, which I think was a part one. Here we go. Flip back over. It's a nice alignment. Watch it again. This, by the way, is an example of straight draw, for those who are wondering. Um, it's bicep pulling, so it goes straight in with the bicep, and then it engages the back muscle that way. I, I kind of do more angler, that's me. Uh, you don't have to do angler draw. Uh, but, let me see this. Half speed. Yeah, I feel with practice, you can get the elbow a bit more behind your head. That's still in line with the uh, arrow, which is really good. Um, you might want to squeeze this a bit more, but if it's consistent and it works for you, nothing wrong with that. Um, let's see the shot. Yeah, you see that you need to work with your, your front bow hand there. It's still very tight, I feel, from this pixel. Um, there's not You're not letting the bow drop naturally, um, so it might sh indicate that you're too tense in your bow grip. So that's my uh, evaluation. So overall, uh, nice form, looking good there. Uh, good shooting, uh, 20 meters, good. Uh, yeah, um, it, it is something which will, will spot there. So trust your sling, um, let it relax, that will change quite a few things there. All right, quick check on check on chat. I think it's one more down here. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see how that again, sorry, wrong window. Okay, let, let's 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 review that. Uh, I would consider this to be a hollow back. Now uh, the it's, I don't think this is a hollow back. Um, the, the the what what most archers do over time is they will basically stretch the back out. So imagine someone pulling you up by your head, or you know you're being like hang like like a puppet. So if you haven't maintained a straight back, that's great. I don't think this is a hollow back. It's not perfect, but it's not bad either. Um, I don't think the feet are that problematic. No, I, I, I will... You, you make an observation, Morton, but I don't think that's the, the focus, which I would say would be needed for training. Um, it's something to think about, but not something necessarily need to fix. So I don't 100% agree with that one there. It's a bow tilt on the right. I think there is there is a, a slight tilt, but again, the angle might be something different there. Again, not a huge thing to worry about at this point here. Um, hmm. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Yeah, let's look at one more. I see some people sending me stuff. Uh, let's look at... Zip. What are you sending me, Zip? A, a, a Google Doc? What? Zip. Oh, this, this is a drive. Okay. Um, right, you sent me a link to my drive, and it's... Yeah, I've got to sign out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not making it easy for me. Zip. Ah, uh, Google Accounts. What's on everything? Zip, send me a link. Like, don't, don't make me request permission. Like, just unlock it for me today. Like, if you're not upload to Drive, sorry, little rant here. Upload to Drive, but just give people the link access because nobody has the links for me, and I have to like change accounts to like view it. So make it easy for me. I can I can do it for you then. 
um, drives fine or send me a, like, a, like share, share share it to my email to like actually add me to your list. Otherwise, I can't view it. I did sign up like five accounts to um to do that. Not not gonna do that. I see, Santa sent me one more video. I might, I might do this for Santa as well. I'm waiting for that. Okay. Oh, here's a nice video. Back to Sanox. Let's have a look. Oh, it's nice. Hey, good slow-mo too. Hey, now we're talking. Oh, this is nice. This is a nice slow motion release. That's fine. Uh, I, I don't have any feedback for that one there. Nice tight anchor, good reference point there. Big hands, helps a lot. Um, this is fine. Good alignment, good good lip alignment there. Nice nose alignment, good finger alignment. Hands are perfectly flat there. Good release. Nice clean line there. That's fine. Really good stuff there. Shoulder stays completely still. No, that's fine. As far as this part of the shot goes, that's completely fine, Sanix. Good job there. Very nice. Very nice. No, that's fine. Good stuff. Keep it up. That's my feedback for you. <laughs> nice and easy, Xanax. <laughs> All right. So, where are we? Uh, it's been an hour and a half nearly, so I might just call it there. I haven't had dinner yet, so I'm going to eat first. Hmm. Okay. Alright, so I can't check your file zip. I need to um, request access, and I don't want to do that right now because it's too much painful to sign up five accounts. But uh, thanks anyway. Um, next time, just share the video with me to my email rather than email me with the link because I can't actually look at the link um, without changing accounts. But apart from that, good stuff there. Um, final comments before we sign up. Sign off, rather. What do I mean? Like, click the share button on the drive video and share it to my email. Don't just send me an email with the link in it because if you don't provide access to to me, I do request access from you. Okay, so because your 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 video is currently set on private, that's what I'm trying to say. So make it public or share the particular vi the link. Like actually click the share button on Drive, then I can see it. Otherwise, I can't see it. Um, other questions. Um, how many times a week do you recommend training archery? Um, if you want to maintain and improve um, as much as you can, uh, I recommend at least uh, two to th oh, for a week, three to four times is a very good amount to train regularly to improve. Um, otherwise, uh, it's a bit um, hard to maintain form. So three to four times a week is a good number. Um, you could submit if you want to. Just send me an email. Um, where are we? Oh. Ah. Uh. As you shared, ah, oh, it still doesn't work for me. Ah, uh, I'll, I'll I'll go through the trouble doing this once. It works. It works. I just need to change everything. Ah, it's a hassle sometimes. I don't like Google does this. Alright, I'm in now. I don't know why Google does this, but it just forces you to sign up every single account to log into an account. I've got it now. I've got it. Okay. Let's have a look at Zip. Here we go. Let's watch this. Zip! Zip! You can't do that! You can't do that, Zip! Actually, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> uh, I was just cringing the sky draw. No, that, that's not too bad. Because you're shooting, I imagine it's a light bow, uh, and you're shooting a fairly close target. Um, so you have to go. That's actually not too bad. That's alright, actually. That's not okay. 
That is a not too bad. It's only one shot, right? Okay. Let's watch this a bit more carefully. We'll do a slow motion if you can. Speed. Let's do half speed. That's actually not a bad shot. Oh, it's a bit cringe there, but uh, okay. W one thing I'd say, uh, this is not a sky draw problem because you're shooting a light bow. So if that's where you're aiming, that's fine. That's not illegal. Um, just one thing I'd watch for when you do this is don't rely on the pivot for momentum. What, I'm, what I mean by this is that quite a few people, yeah, 30 meters, I thought so. Yeah, quite a few people do this. It's, it's a weird thing, okay? So um, it's like, um, okay, uh, anecdote. Back when I played pool or billets, whatever, back when I played pool, um, the correct way to use a pool cue is, I've got pool cue here, sorry, I'll go right back. There are other things lying around, which makes sense. Whip, whip, whip. I'm not sure why I'm demonstrating this, but I'm here. Camera. Okay, so the, 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 there's a particular habit which I saw some people do. When you normally play pool, you normally, you know, you, you, you form your bridge. I have no table here, but you form your bridge and you, you align the stick like that. But there are a couple of times where I saw other people play, and these are, you know, obviously people having fun. Uh, these were girls who were just, um, there's no technique or form. But they would do this. They would line up, then they would go up, and then straight down. It's a weird kind of up, down. So you have this upward motion, come back down, and then use momentum to get a straight drive. So instead of having power through your core and doing correctly, or doing correct by driving it through, they would go up up and then down, some weird technique, but the idea is that they were using momentum to get power in the shot rather than using the right muscles. We'll, we'll get back to our, our bow. <clears throat> so using the, the bow example, so what, what, what I see some people do is instead of engaging the right muscles to draw correctly, They'll rely on that pivot. They'll come up like that and then pull from there. And I think that's not the best way of shooting. Um, so again, some people will use it to mask um, poor technique or low strength. So just be mindful, Zip, that if you're shooting 24 pound, that's pretty hefty for your size. Um, just be mindful that if you can't draw normally without that pivot motion um, you might want to condition yourself or shoot a lighter bow. a couple of things there um, <laughs> Jeff yes something cool um, yeah so what was I um, yeah uh, it, it's kind of like the golf swing of archery where in order to get a heavy draw weight back you have to use momentum to get it back there and I think it's, it's, it, it indicates kind of poor control uh, not necessarily a bad thing but you need to be a bit more conditioned to draw like from a straight position rather than rely on that. So if we go back to our, our um, video, um, that might be what you were doing. So we'll watch this again from the start at half speed. Uh, so 30 meters, that's a good angle. And so we'll watch at normal speed because it's a bit more obvious at normal speed. Now keep doing the quality settings, here we go. Normal speed. I think it's okay, just be mindful of that. Uh, big part here is your shoulder alignment. Um, you're shooting 30 meters, so you're elevating above the uh, the target, uh, but you'll see that you are, um, your shoulders are out of line. So that's probably the one thing to watch for, is that, watch the pivot. Um, I don't think it's bad. This is a, probably a normal, sh a normal routine for you, but at the same time, um, that to me is not looking good. Um, probably check the shoulder alignment. It's, you are aiming higher, but there's a uh, a shoulder up here, and your rear shoulder's down there. So I'd be more careful with this. What I recommend is you basically stand straighter. Um, at 30 meters on a 24 pound bow with a short draw length, you don't need to elevate that high. Um, you might want to stand straighter and keep this above your shoulder line, rather than like, like this. This is uh, a bit of a hunch shot. The shot's good, by the way. It's a nice shot, nice follow-through, good tension line. But uh, if there's one thing I'd probably change or advise, 
is that front shoulder should drop. Yeah. Otherwise, shooting's fine. Nothing wrong with that. I'm pretty happy with that that uh that shot process. Uh, but I'd probably drop the front shoulder a bit there. Is it both too firm? Po possibly. Oh, you have fixed it. Good. Okay. Nice. There you go. Yeah, you're fixing things about me telling you. Well, what I'm observing, this is why I don't always agree with people in chat. As the coach, I only give people one or two things to work with. Not a, now, leaning back, not a big deal with this one. That there are always, like, oh, there's full screen. <laughs> Whoa, I discovered something about YouTube. Alright, oh, I mean, Google Drive. Duh. Duh. Mm. Eh. It's a little tense, yeah, yeah, you're right. That 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 is like a white knuckle here, so uh yeah. Uh I'd watch that bow grip there. Good good good, good observation. So I've got the shoulder there, but that's a uh, very tight grip there, zip. It gets tight as you draw. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a thing that happens with the power. Uh when you're getting used to high draw weights, um especially long distance, you tend to be a bit more tense. So just you just keep that hand relaxed. That's that's a white knuckle grip. But you're right there, Johnny, good point there. Um okay. All right. Anything else? I want to sign off because it's eight thirty. I want to enjoy the rest of my school holidays. The last like four hours or so. What else? Sick and anchor? No, I don't think so. In this particular video, no. But a, a lot of people will follow through like that, but that, I don't think that it's intentional sick and anchor. That's, a, that's just a straight follow through. Not, there's nothing wrong with that at all. That's fine. A lot of people follow through like that, the Olympic recurve. Oh, good. Okay. Well, uh, let's do a quick email check. Did anyone else send me anything? Uh, I don't want that. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Any last request? Ah, yes, here we go. Don't show footage on the live stream. Daniel, I can't do this without showing people. What can I say? <laughs> uh, it, well, use, use my imagination. Um, okay, I, I'll, I'll watch it. I won't show on the stream. I'll do a very quick one for you. Hmm. Just, just imagine what I'm looking at, guys. <laughs> Use my facial reactions. Yeah, okay, I understand what you're worried about. I'll watch the other view just very quickly. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. This isn't worth analyzing. I'll watch it. Yeah. Um, Daniel, uh, you need to drop your poundage. You're shooting 56 pound. Yeah, this is uh, a little cringy of the stream. I'm not gonna show this to you. Um, ouch. Uh, my advice, Daniel, if you're watching the stream, don't shoot that bow. You're gonna hurt yourself. Uh, uh, for those who are wondering what I'm watching, um, I want you to I imagine someone shooting um, a bow that is three times as strong as what they should be pulling back. So what do people do? They'll lean back, shoulder up, in half draw and let go that's basically what daniel's doing unfortunately so um instead of shooting a 56 pound bow shoot a 20 pound bow all right don't do this uh i would not analyze it because basically you're shooting with no form you're not shooting the right bow for you and there's no point really going into more detail shoot a lighter bow shoot properly learn from them that's my advice for you daniel so um yeah no it's, it's, it's fair to send me some stuff uh but at the same time um not you're right it's not worth showing um but yeah uh, it's it's not a form check if you have something else's bow it's not a form check we're just basically shooting a bow i mean you, you can barely pull it back so uh, not not something worth rigging detail about if you're shooting your own bow then it's worth analyzing if you're shooting something else, which is much higher than you normally shoot, then you know what you're doing wrong, hopefully. Um, that's a question, oh, sorry, that's a question before. 
Uh, where was I? Yeah, the, the, the deck of strings is not bad. Good stuff in your strings. Uh, that's pretty, it's pretty addictive to, um, to make fun of that. Don't worry about duck feet. I seriously don't, don't worry about it. You know, pe pe you, you will always shoot. You you always see pro shooters with parallel feet. They shoot fine. You see some shooters with very open stance with like splayed feet. They shoot fine. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, pro tips. Just have fun. Like if you just start at archery, the right thing your pro tips. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Enjoy it. Have fun. Don't worry about it too much. Um, is it worth mounting a short stabilizer on a static Polaris? Yeah, no. If if you wanna like um, if you wanna get used to shooting heavy bow, yeah, put a stabilizer. The the Polaris is designed to go with um, you know, um, stabilizers to use them. They're completely fine. All right, I'm gonna sign off because I'm getting a little hungry now because it's eight forty p.m. So that's it for this live form check. Thank you for joining me, guys. Um, if you wanna get more form checks live, just keep on sending me things. Um, I'll I'll I'll, I'll keep on the backlog. We'll go through them in in due time. So um, thanks to everyone who uh, was sharing videos. Uh, it's not easy to um, you know kind of share it and commentate and have someone rip you up. Um, so I understand if you don't want to send me stuff. At the same time, like I said, it's a good learning process. It's often easier to show things visually rather than um, you know describe things in text or being told what to do. So uh, it's nice to learn this together. Um, otherwise, thank you a lot, everybody. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are. This is New Sensei. I'll see you next time.